Hello again. According to official data, space weather was pretty calm in last couple days. The only activity which is worth to mention took place on January 26. Soon before noon, KP index was raised to 4, what means that we've had a weak geomagnetic storm. We can easily guess the most possible cause on the ACE magnetic field chart, when we can see that around the same time BZ component fell to minus 15 nanoteslas. It seems as well that the wave of solar wind which hit us was in fact a boundary between two different sectors of IMF. Earth is again placed in a part of heliosphere with positive outward magnetic orientation. Strong negative BZ made a clear impact on the geomagnetic field. In Canada, disturbances were recorded by most of magnetometer stations. And in this moment, things start to go wrong. Events which took place on the other side of Atlantic seem to tell a completely different story. Just like the ocean would be a border between two different realities, geomagnetic field in Europe seems to be immune to the southward directed solar wind. There are no disturbances at all during the time when BZ was negative. Much more significant event took place couple hours earlier. Fierce disturbance reached around 400 nanoteslas and raised the local K index to 6 in the morning. This time there is nothing on the ACE graphs what could be blamed for those disturbances. However, this time some minor disturbances were recorded as well on the other side of the globe. All those density spikes allow me to guess that all those instabilities were caused by an incoming coronal hole stream with opposite polarity. Frontal density wave is causing right now a strong compression of the plasmosphere, what is visible on the GOES electron flux graph. Funny, couple days ago I was still wondering about those disturbances. Suddenly I connected this graph with compression of magnetosphere in last episode and I didn't even notice it. In my previous movie, I started to build a very important part of my model. Interactions between magnetosphere and atmosphere. In the beginning of this subject, I was showing you a pair of typhoons on the Indian Ocean, which somehow managed to establish a connection between them. If things won't change, it will become a tradition. It seems that couple days after I published my previous movie, twin typhoons returned. This time, centers of those powerful low pressure systems are placed east from their last locations. Before, Typhoon on the left side was making mess over Madagascar. I've marked our geographic equator with red line. It is visible clearly that equatorial air circulation is greatly displaced. I've said as well that events which are taking place right now over Australia can be crucial for the entire planet. Air masses from the land are being pulled to the polar region by an open magnetic field line. But look at the spinning low pressure system, which against everything what we know about weather patterns is moving westward. Look how this single air mass affected the entire southern polar vortex. In the moment when it emerged from polar region, center of polar vortex circulation started to shift in the direction of South Atlantic. Things are getting to get interesting when we compare both hemispheres. An air mass which is very similar to the one from south appears between Europe and Africa. On this side of planet, center of polar vortex is displaced much stronger. Center of rotation is located right now in Alaska. In my last movie I was explaining how events which are taking place high above the surface of Earth and which can be seen on magnetosphere monitors affect the atmosphere and weather patterns. Something tells me that I'm going in good direction, so today I will go deeper into this subject. 
Influence of space environment on the atmosphere is possible because of energetic particles which are hovering hundreds of kilometers above our heads, in the ionosphere. Those images were taken from IRTAM HMF2 ionosphere monitor and show the height of F2 layer, or simply how high the energetic particles are placed. Red color shows the highest levels, while blue shows the regions where particles were pushed down to the lowest altitudes. If you've seen my previous movies, you should know already that the height of energetic particles depends mostly on magnetic forces which are affecting our planet. Those forces are very variable and can change in the matter of minutes. So are the field lines which connect our planet with the space beyond. However, it is possible to track some patterns in the behavior of particles. Take a look at this animation. I think that it is not too hard to point out the region which is affected stronger than the rest of the globe. Keep in mind that magnetic influence is the strongest in areas where fields with opposite polarities are placed next to each other. Just like here. Such configuration of ionospheric particles means that this region became a connection point for a magnetic field line which allows the exchange of particles between Earth and low energy field, which according to my model is causing most of recent disturbances. To say it shortly, this is the region where the rate of plasma outflows and inflows is bigger than anywhere else. If I am correct, we should be able to see how magnetic forces affect directly the atmosphere above Southern America. So, let's look at satellite images. I would say that over this part of the globe, magnetic tentacle is bigger than anywhere else. There is a clear connection between bigger part of the continent and polar region. Another connection can be seen over the equator, where upper air masses move counterclockwise. Here we can see another example of magnetic connection between equatorial belt and polar region. And here another connection is being developed. Air masses from the equator are pulled to the north. Let's look for a while at the process of reconnection which took place couple days ago, on January 25, over northern Atlantic. Magnetic field line connected to the polar cap looks like a giant dragon which bites equatorial air masses. In the place where this connection took place, a counterclockwise spinning air mass started to develop. It is powered by high atmospheric pressure, what allowed it to connect with a low pressure system over southern Europe, which is spinning in the same direction. Polarities, which are visible as differences of temperature, are placed in opposite configurations in those two systems. This means that magnetic equator is placed somewhere between them. But let's go back again to January 25, as on this day differential and polarities were visible better than normally. First of all, notice what is the connection point of the field line which made a reconnection with the equatorial belt. It seems to stick out in the middle of Iceland. Something tells me that it might be connected with the recent seismic activity of this region. Another field line can be seen over Europe. This one was connecting polar air masses with low pressure system which appeared over northern Africa. Both field lines are visible nicely on the air quality monitors, especially when we look at particulate matter 10. Things are getting very interesting as weather patterns seem to change in the ways which I didn't expect. It seems that in the areas where reconnection between polar cap and equator took place, 
a vortex is being created. I would say that from the magnetic point of view, open magnetospheric field line over polar cap and closed field line from the equatorial belt nullified each other and gave birth to a new field line, which is placed somewhere between its parents. Most important are the last frames where two strange air masses appeared over southern Pacific. Maybe they didn't look so scary from the distance, but when we will make a closer look at one of those anomalies, you will understand what I mean. Two low pressure systems merged into one S-shaped anomaly. Because both spin in the same direction, magnetic connection can take place. I've explained it in previous movie. Polar air mass placed southeast from Australia has negative polarity. Current is directed towards it, while tropical storm to the north is giving the energy, what makes it positively polarized. But both systems are powered by low air pressure, what in the case of atmosphere is causing an inward flow of particles. So it's a connection between two negative potentials. How it is possible? There are many kinds of differentials. Air pressure is only one of them. In this case, it's the temperature what causes the strongest differential. Warm equatorial air mass is discharged by cold polar air. Notice that at highest cloud layers, temperature is much lower over the equator. Anyway, after a couple days, both low pressure systems were destroyed by polar air masses. For the end of electromagnetic weather part, I would like to show you the circulation of polar vortex over northern hemisphere. Look at the air masses over northern Pacific, which seem to oppose the counterclockwise rotation. Of course, I have to mention the latest geomagnetic storm, which took place in the night between 1st and 2nd February. During this time, BZ magnetic component fell to minus 9 nanoteslas, what was enough to raise the KP index to 5. Storm was caused by an incoming coronal hole stream, which was pretty fast. Solar wind velocity grew from 400 to 700 km per second. Impact affected the geomagnetic field on global scale. However, in Europe, disturbances were much stronger than in Canada. For example, in Kiruna, initial impact was strong enough to elevate the local K index to 7. But even if at lower latitudes, geomagnetic disturbances were pretty strong, global KP index reached only 5 points. I'm not sure if there is a connection between the recent geomagnetic activities and atomic oxygen in the ionosphere, but couple hours after the strongest disturbances took place, density of those particles started to drop and finally moved once more to the night side of our planet. Good information is that at the same time amount of neutral oxygen molecules in the ionosphere started to grow. Not so long ago I was talking about the magnetic dipole tilt and how it affects magnetosphere and whole planet. But besides the tilt of Z magnetic component, north-south orientation, another disturbance can be seen on XY dimensional plane. There is a visible tilt of Y component, east-west orientation. This disturbance is the main cause of magnetosphere BY wobble and other anomalies like the dislocation of electron cloud in the ionosphere or displacement of equatorial flux tubes. But it seems that the Y component tilt is strong enough to change the direction of plasma flow within the magnetotail. Check out the geotail satellite readings. Wide grid shows the XY dimensional plane. Arrows show the direction and velocity of energetic particles. 
I think that the tilt is visible clearly. For the end, let's look at the European air quality monitors, especially particulate matter concentration. Check out what happened in the evening of February 4th. Just before midnight, density of PM grew suddenly over Central Europe, mostly above Poland. Although this sudden increase of toxic dust density is visible mostly on images generated by just one model, called MATCH, other atmosphere monitors like EU RAT show extremely high density of particulate matter over Northern Africa. But what made me little bit scared was the air quality over my own head. It seems that in last couple days particulate matter became extremely high in Poland and surrounding areas. Of course, there wasn't even a single word about this issue in the news. Let's make just a small look at the magnetic polarity of Sun. On this animation, fields with positive magnetic orientation are marked by blue color. Negative polarity is in orange. As you can see, strongest polarities are still placed at solar equator, instead of geographic poles. It means that the solar cycle is still far from the end, and the magnetic poles still didn't manage to flip. And that would be all for today. Sorry that you've had to wait so long for this movie. I'll try to be faster next time. Class dismissed. Be safe. Peace.